I'm just disappointed with him because I mean he, he grew up in Minnesota until he was 15 years old, and then he then he moved here. So I mean, he's a, he's a Minnesota guy, and he and he uh, and he's ashamed and he's ashamed of it. It makes it's kind of doesn't not understand it. No, you know I think he just he, he, he's like. He's one of those guys that just he, jump, he jumps on the winner, you know what I mean? Whoever whoever's doing the best, he just you know, he's a Suns fan, but if the Lakers are doing good. He shows up in a Kobe jersey, you know. You, you know, just, you can't you can't be doing that. Yeah. With Crabtree, uh, Cliff was saying like how much he can add with veteran experience to the other younger guys in the wide receiver room. But is there what can he teach them that you haven't already? Uh, I mean, we we got great teachers, you know, with Jerry Sullivan, David Rye. I mean, those guys. <laughs> They work, our, they work us every single day to get better and improve. I mean, um, you know, I know he's going to come in with his skill set. Obviously, Coach Sullivan coached him for, for years in San Francisco. But, I mean, this, this group has worked very hard to solidify themselves and, um, you know, adding somebody else who's going to make plays only only make your group stronger. If you were the czar of football, what would you do with the preseason? Cut it down, not have it? Um, I think it's necessary to be able to, you know, identify, you know, guys who are not starters to be able to gain them some, some experience and get their confidence up, develop players, especially in younger guys um, that will be contributors if something were to happen to a starter. And those guys need that game experience. They need to be able to know they can go out there and win with the technique they're being taught every single day. They need to know they can run the offense or play in the defense or cover the kick or kick the ball. I mean, whatever they're, they're working on, they need to be able to have that. And there's no way you can simulate that game speed with the crowd noise intensity that comes with playing, um, you know, in a real live professional game. So I, I think it's necessary. You're not surprised, though, that more and more teams are basically telling their starters you're not going to play at all? No, I, I'm not, not as surprised at all. I mean, even when I first got in the league, I remember LaDainian Tomlinson, got, certain, certain guys didn't play. I think it's just more now. but. Each team is different, you know. I like I like to play. I like to get tackled. I like to get into the flow of the game, you know. Cause, I mean, I haven't been tackled since I walked off the field in Seattle last. Just a long time to not have your body just ready for what's to come. You know, week one is going to be it's going to be a hellacious battle out there. There's going to be bodies flying around. I need to prepare myself for what that feels like again. And that's just me personally, but everybody's different. There were some proclamations made about the Cardinals after that, that game against the Raiders. I mean, can you tell anything? How much can you tell about a team in the, in the preseason based on those games? I mean, if you would have looked at us last year at the same point, you would probably thought we were going to win a Super Bowl last year off our preseason performance. So, I mean, I don't think you can really gauge much off the preseason. I mean, everybody's playing pretty vanilla. And once we're able to showcase what we really do offensively, I think it will be, it'll be pretty dynamic. So I'm, I'm confident it will be just fine. Kyler sees some blitz against the Vikings. Is that a good thing? Well, he's going to get blitzed early and often. Every rookie quarterback sees that. I mean, that's just part of the game. And as soon as he shows that he can beat it and uh, we can beat it, you know, I think we can, um, you know, we'll be able to deal with what's next. How much have you seen Trent grow since he got here? Little bros every day. You know, he's so hungry. Um, he fights and scratches for every single for every single thing. I mean, just coming in last year, you know, as an afterthought. And, fighting and carving his way opportunity. He came back this offseason even better, stronger, faster, quicker than he was. And every single day he makes a play in practice and a release or a block or a hustle play on the backside that just lets you know he deserves to be here. He deserves to have a, a seat at the table and opportunity when the games come. And so I'm really proud of him. Um, and, you know, we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. He's only going to get better. He's one of those guys that his cup is always empty. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on, how many how many catches he had. He's always thinking about what he doesn't have and you gotta have that mentality in this business. Is he kind of awesome personality wise just to us at least No, he hasn't no. He's he's very consistent personality wise. I mean he's a really smart, intelligent, insightful guy. I mean, you don't go to Vandy by mistake, you know. Um, you know, so I mean he's he's got from a personality standpoint, he's he's exactly where, you know, you you would expect him to be. He's confident but not overly confident. Um, very smart, like I said, he can play any 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 position on the football field, you know, and then he can contribute on every phase of special teams. So he's a key contributor to, to what we're going to be doing this year. He told us after that touchdown catch against the Chargers, when the ball's in the air, he likes to think of himself on a beach in paradise to keep himself calm. Do you, do you think of anything when the ball's in the air? Um, you know, I think things kind of slow down when the ball's in the air for me. I mean, it's like I don't hear the noise. I don't hear, you know, I don't feel anything. I just see the ball come in slow motion and I just try to attack it. So, you know,
know, I guess, you know, the beach is his, what he's thinking. I, I just think it's very still and quiet. You, you, you guys, you hope play with a half or does, does it matter? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know I'm playing along with one plan, so ain't nobody else blocking for him but us. There you go. <laughs> so if the Vikings dial up the blitz like the Raiders did, what do you think about that? Uh, block it. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Raiders were clearly trying to prove a point. Like, cool beans. You guys game plan like it was a regular season for us to play a quarter. Ran a zero blitz in the second preseason in the game. And speed package in the second preseason of the game. Like, cool beans, you guys are on high narcs. Good for y'all. Trying to get some ratings. You been called a pretty boy? I'm, hey, let me tell you something about me. <laughs> that ain't the first time I've been called pretty. <laughs> that ain't the first time I've been called pretty, you know what I'm saying? It tells you about me. It ain't that hard to get me, you know what I mean? I wasn't surprised when he called us pretty, you know what I mean? Was, maybe everybody else was because it was their first time, but me, I was like, yeah. What do you expect him to call me? I don't know. Yeah. Thank you, right? Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Who's the prettiest on that team? Come on now. <laughs> what you think? You, you don't see me right here? You not see me? Just saying, man. Some stuff they stopped doing a long time ago. You know, they stopped making that 96 Impala a long time ago. They, they stopped making these in 93, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. This is like an SS. I don't know. We're going to play this for Dash one day. Oh, man. man. Hey, you see what your dad was like back then? Yeah, he's going to be so embarrassed. He's so modest and calm. He's going to be so embarrassed. He's nothing like how I am. It's just a wild. My daughter, though, she'll die laughing. She's just like that. <laughs> it doesn't hurt your rookie quarterback to get a sense of what regular season blitzes might look like, right? No, no chance. No, not at all. I think that's that's good for him, you know, getting to be able to see it before it actually happens and it counts. You know what I mean? You're seeing those real ones that stack up, so it's good to see that for him. I think. Yeah. You know, you won't be in the room with Michael Crabtree as much, but what is adding another veteran to? It's oh, it's always so. good to have those those veteran guys, you know. Um, it's something about it. My, my rookie year, we, we had a lot of vets, man, and it's, it's different when you're around guys that has been places and know how to win. Yeah, it's always helpful, always. And with him also having familiarity with this offense, um, how much can that help right away? Oh, it can help a lot. I mean, the, the good thing about it is when you're dealing with a guy like that, some people you just say, hey, you got this route. And that's, you just let him do his thing, you're throwing the ball. So that that'd be cool to see how he how he mesh with us. Does having vets in the locker room really make a difference when it comes to oh, yeah. operate? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of people that are uh, that have been here and who haven't. There's a lot of people you got guys like Marcus Gilbert and Sweezy, you know what I mean? Those guys come to the offensive line and they they've been in big games, they've been in playoff games, they know how to win, you know what I mean? So it brings something different to the group, you know. Only winning season I really had here was my rookie year, and I didn't play. You know what I mean. So being with those guys, that's kind of rubbing off on us in a good way. It's cool to be around. I think he's been a very productive player in this league. Um, very savvy, mentally tough player. Plays physical. I mean, brings a lot for the, for our young receivers to um, you know learn from and, and be around. And uh, so we're excited about him. Uh, you know, I've known him a long time, super competitive, and uh, still has a, a real desire to, to play and play at a high level. I just remember uh, coming back to train there in Lubbock, and they were talking about this freshman. Um, and then that year he went out and won the Blitnikoff, and then he did it again the next year. And so, um, you know, he, he from day one uh, out there was a superstar, and he's had a heck of an NFL career as well. Yeah, I felt good about it. I, I think there's some youth um, that has stepped up. I think you see Trent Sherfield, who's come on. Uh, Keyshawn continues to get better. You got, you know, obviously Fitz and Kirk, um, who we see as, as really good players for us. And, and uh, Michael's another piece. Pretty much every young guy raves about how much they can learn from Larry and so good with him. Are there things that you think Michael can teach them to build upon that more? Uh, you know, it, it, Larry's seen it all and done it all, so I, I don't know if anybody has more knowledge than him, but I, just knowing um, Crab's personality, the, the way he competes and practices and, and the effort with which he plays the game, uh, I think that'll be good for, for them to see. How quickly can he learn that I would say fairly quickly. He's played in a bunch of different offenses. There'll be some similar concepts to 
um, you know, what he ran in, in college, not not a ton, but enough where I think he's going to pick it up quickly. And, and we'll make sure that, that we, um, you know, manage that and have guys working with him to try and expedite that process. Can Hector jump right in and, and be a player, or you got to kind of see what he has? We, we like what we've seen on tape, and, and um, you know, Steve feels really good about it, um, talking to their coaches. and how he's continuing to get better and, and we think he comes in and provides depth right away and uh, so we're looking forward to getting him here and, and getting him out there. Coach, I know you probably answered this right off the bat, but just having Crabtree in this um, wide off rotation, where do you see him being implemented and just how excited I was excited. You know, we watched his workout and felt like he did a, a really nice job. Um, like I said, he, he wants to play, uh, wants to prove what he's still got and um, so I think he's going to fit right in. Yeah, we'll have to be smart with him and work 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 it in. But I, I think he's played a lot of football, caught a lot of passes in this league, and and uh, the conditioning will we'll get him up to speed. And however slowly we got to bring him into the fold, we'll, we'll do that. But I, I think mentally, just getting things installed with him so he has that comfort level and he can go out and play freely. You started coaching around that time when he was at Tech, and they were playing well. Houston was making strides. Was your offensive philosophy cemented kind of early because you you saw the way it could work? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think as a player and, and then um, getting into the coaching rankings, being around, uh, you know, some of those really uh, impactful college coaches on offense. You're talking about Mike Leach and Art Browse, Dana Holgerson, and guys that have done it at a high level. Um, when you've been around that and seen uh, how well those guys have done, yeah, I think it definitely makes an impression upon you. Yeah, I just think um, talking to Chris Wilson, um, who was there previously on, on the Eagle staff, they were very high on him. Uh, feel like a player who played, you know, meaningful snaps from last year and, and has had a nice preseason. Uh, so I'm anxious to get him out and see where he's at. No question. Um, they have a plethora of information every day, really whatever you want. However deep into that wormhole you want to dive, you can get there. And, and so I'm big on collecting information and trying to make better decisions from it. And whether it's, you know, fourth and one calls or, um, you know, what, what plays are run in the red zone, they're going to have some information that can help you kind of curtail your, your game plan. It has. It has. I know there, there's some people outsource it, and, and a lot of teams are bringing it in-house. And... I think we have a good group um, that's excited to, to get that really rolling. With that analytics on a certain play or decision, how do you weigh the numbers versus just your gut? Feel? Right. It, it always comes down to, to your, your uh, gut. I mean, you, you had the final say, but I think having pertinent information, relevant information is huge. Um, it's not just winging it. If, if they can give you the stats and um, give you percentage, then you feel better about your decision. I do. I expect him to get some time. I'm not sure how many snaps, but he, he's done well. Hopped right back in there and has uh, looked solid. Any other injuries heading into that game? I don't think so. I, I think um, the ones you know are the, are the ones that will be out and the ones uh, that have gotten back will, will play. I'm not sure to what extent, but they'll play. Thank you. Thank you all.